Okay, so right now we're going to summarize our knowledge of horizontal asymptotes and vertical asymptotes. So first of all, let's talk about horizontal asymptotes. Now we know that a horizontal asymptote is when we look at the end behavior of our graph. I need a pen here. Please give me a pen. There we go. So as x approaches infinity, I'm looking toward the end of the graph. What, how is the graph behaving? Now, if you approach a constant b, then that means that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals b. And then if you look at the graph as it approaches negative infinity, then at the end of the graph, the end behavior then would be the horizontal asymptote at y equals b. Now, rational functions. So if we have a rational function, in other words, that's two polynomial functions divided, then we can also find horizontal asymptotes by looking at some patterns. In other words, if we look at the end behavior of the model. So here is an example of a general generalization of a rational function, where m is the degree of the numerator and n is the degree of the denominator. And we can look at the end behavior when we look at the degrees that have the greatest degree in the numerator and denominator. And when we compare those, then this will give us a model for the end behavior of our rational functions. So let's organize this information. So I've made a little chart here, and let's say that we have a rational function where m is equal to n. So in other words, excuse me for the pause, I had to grab my notes. So in other words, we would have such that a to the m over b to the n, and these of course would have variables, where m and n are equal, then we would end up with a over b, okay? So that would be the model of what's happening. So as x approaches infinity, then we know that we have a horizontal asymptote at a over b. So those are the coefficients of the variable. Now, again, the asymptote actually would be y equals a over b. Okay? Now, what if the degree is greater in the denominator? So if we have a over b, x, and we would then subtract, because remember we do subtraction for division, so we know that the denominator is larger, then we, if you think about it, the denominator is getting larger and larger and larger, it's so like 1 over 100, 1 over 1,000, 1 over a million, 1 over a billion. You can notice that as that denominator approaches infinity, then our y value is approaching zero. So then the horizontal asymptote will be zero. Now, what if the degree is larger, greater in the denominator? So if the denominator, excuse me, if the numerator is greater, then we would do the subtraction of the exponents in the numerator all over b to the x. Okay? And so when we do the subtraction in the numerator, as x approaches infinity, well, the numerator is getting larger and larger. So like 100 over 1, 1,000 over 1, a million over 1. We notice that y is either going to approach positive or negative infinity. Now here there will be no horizontal asymptote. Now we could calculate the slant asymptote by actually doing long division of this rational function, but we're not going to have to do that now. Okay? Phew! That's a good thing. Let's do a couple of examples. So for each one then, we are going to look at the end behavior of model, then we're going to evaluate the limit, determine whether or not there are any horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so we're not going to actually have to determine the slant, okay? So for my first function, as the limit x approaches infinity, what is happening at the end behavior? Well, I look at the terms here with the greatest degree, and I notice that the degree in the denominator is greater. So we would have 2x over 3x squared. So because it's division, then I would subtract. So I end up with 2 over 3x. Okay, oops, x, excuse me, not x squared, 2 over 3x. And that would be the end behavior model. So we could write that then, is we will have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 thirds. Okay, so as x approaches infinity, then y will approach 2 thirds. Okay, next example. As x approaches infinity, we have 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 all over x squared plus 1. Well, again, we look at the leading degrees, okay? So we have 2x squared over x squared, and when we simplify, we end up with 2. 
So two is the end behavior model. So that means if we end up with two as the end behavior model, then our y value will be approaching two. So as x approaches infinity, then y will approach two. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals two. And last of all, whoops, I thought I had a last of all. Maybe not. Maybe it's down here. No. I thought I had an example where then the numerator was greater than the denominator. And if that happens, then we know, so like for example, if I were to rewrite it as the limit of x approaches infinity, of let's just say 3x to the cube over 2x squared, well this is an example of where the numerator is larger than denominator. So if we were to look at this end behavior model, we would have 3x to the cube minus 2 all over 2, so we'd end up with 3x over 2. And as x increases, notice we do not end up with a constant. So there is no horizontal asymptote. And as x approaches infinity, then my y value will also approach infinity. Because as I substitute larger numbers in for x, I will approach infinity. OK, vertical asymptotes. Now, a vertical asymptote, we find a vertical asymptote of a graph of a function if we approach a constant from the right or a constant from the left, and we are approaching the values or positive or negative infinity. Okay? Now, this will happen whenever there's a value that gives you a zero in the denominator. Ooh, but notice, not the numerator. So, for example, if you do your substitution and you factor and you reduce and you rationalize and you end up with the limit of a function as you approach some constant a, and it equals, let's say, 7 over 0. Notice we have a constant over 0. So whenever we have a constant over 0, this is undefined. So then we can draw the conclusion that the limit does not exist. Now, however, the limit might be an example of where at this constant um, c, we might be approaching infinity from the left and the right, or we might be approaching negative infinity from the left and the right, or we could also be approaching, you know, positive infinity from the right and then negative infinity from the left. Now, in all of these scenarios, the limit does not exist. But in this scenario, we can say that from the left and the right, the graphs are, are going toward infinity. Here, they're going toward negative infinity. Here, the right is positive infinity and the left is negative infinity. But all of them, the limit does not exist because infinity is not a number. So thus, the limit fails to exist in these cases, okay? Important to know. Let's look at an example. f of x equals x squared minus 1 equals 4. Oh, in this example, we want to find the vertical asymptotes. Now remember, vertical asymptotes will happen when the denominator is equal to 0. Okay? So in this example, when does 2x plus 4 equal 0? So I solve for x. So at, as x approaches negative 2, then the, we will have a vertical asymptote. Now I need to substitute and just check, because remember, it's undefined when you have a constant divided by 0. This is when we will have an undefined function. I don't know if you remember from pre-calculus, but if you have 0 divided by 0, zero this, is, this is an indeterminate form, indeterminate form. And what that tells you is that, you know what, I need to investigate this a little bit more. Because there, it could be that the limit does not exist, but it also, so it doesn't exist could be a possibility, but it also could mean that there's a hole in the graph, okay? So if I get a constant divided by zero, we know definitely it's undefined. However, if it's zero divided by zero, that's indeterminate form. We need to do a little bit more investigation. So let's check. When I substitute negative two into the function, do I get a constant divided by 0 or 0 divided by 0? So negative 2 squared minus 1 over 2 times negative 2 plus 4. Negative 2 squared is 4. So I end up with 3 over 0, which is a constant divided by 0. So therefore, x equals negative 2. There is a vertical asymptote occurring there. And then I could check. I could pick a number to the left to the right of negative 2 and determine whether it's approaching infinity, negative infinity, or neither. One more example and we're done. How about this? 
So I need to determine if there's a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to look at the denominator, and I'm going to ask my son and myself, when does x equal 0 here? So I'm going to have to factor 0 product property, okay? So I'm going to have 2x and x, so minus 3 plus 1. So the possibilities are at negative 1 half and 3. Now it is possible to have more than one vertical asymptote. So I need to check when I substitute these problems into the original equation, do I get a constant divided by 0? So if I look for negative 1 half, 1 minus negative 1 half, yes, that would give me 3 halves in the numerator. So this is the numerator. So this would be fine. Now when I substitute 3 into the numerator, so the numerator, I would get 1 minus 3, which gives me negative 2. So that also is a constant in the numerator. So therefore, I have found two vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1 half and 3.